Can anyone be more racist than Arabs? It might sound like a controversial statement, but wait until you realize what the Arabs did to black people. History is filled with brutal examples. The worst part is that this continues. While efforts are made to end it, nothing seems to change the mindset of Arabs. So, a genuine question here is, why are they like this? Let's find out. Racism, an insidious force shaping societies worldwide, is not confined by geographical or cultural boundaries. It reaches deep into the communities, manifesting in various forms of discrimination and prejudice. Expanding on the historical context, it's imperative to recognize the long-standing interactions between Arab and African societies, which have shaped perceptions and attitudes over centuries. The historical relationship between Arabs and Africans spans trade, conquest, and cultural exchange, yet instances of exploitation and marginalization also mark it. From the Arab slave trade that operated across Africa, to the colonial legacies that linger in the collective consciousness, these historical layers contribute to the complexity of Arab-Black relations. Today, we will talk about everything and will show you how Arabs are the most racist toward Blacks. It all starts with the legacy of slavery. To understand the complexities of Arab racism against Blacks, one must confront the enduring legacy of the Arab slave trade. Spanning centuries, this dark chapter in history saw millions of Africans forcibly enslaved and transported across the Arabian Peninsula and beyond. Unlike the transatlantic slave trade, which is widely acknowledged and memorialized, the Arab slave trade often remains shrouded in silence. Yet, its impact reverberates through time, influencing societal attitudes and perceptions toward black individuals. The Arab slave trade, deeply entrenched in the economic and social structures of Arab societies, played a significant role in shaping racial hierarchies and power dynamics. Africans were captured through raids, warfare, and trade networks with the demand for labor driving the expansion of the slave trade. Slaves were used for various purposes, including domestic work, agriculture, and military service, contributing to the prosperity and expansion of Arab societies. Contrary to popular belief, slavery in Arab societies was not solely based on race, but encompassed a diverse range of peoples, including Europeans, Central Asians, and Indians. However, the racialized nature of the Arab slave trade cannot be overlooked, as Africans were disproportionately targeted and subjected to harsh treatment and exploitation. The dehumanization of black slaves, coupled with entrenched stereotypes and prejudices, perpetuated notions of inferiority and subjugation. The legacy of the Arab slave trade continues to shape perceptions of race and ethnicity within Arab societies, albeit often unrecognized or downplayed. Historical amnesia and collective silence have obscured the full extent of this legacy, contributing to the erasure of black voices and experiences. There are many examples of brutality against black slaves that made Arab society reach the peak of racism. One is the Trans-Saharan slave trade. The Trans-Saharan slave trade involved the capture and transportation of African slaves across the Sahara Desert into North Africa and the Middle East. This trade route existed for centuries before the transatlantic slave trade and continued well into the 20th century. Slaves were primarily obtained through raids on villages or as prisoners of war. The Ottoman Empire, spanning across regions of North Africa, the Middle East, and Southeast Europe, heavily relied on slave labor. Black slaves were commonly used in various capacities, including domestic service, agricultural work, and military roles. The Ottomans had a complex slave system, with slaves being acquired through warfare, trade, and tribute. One of the most notable uprisings by black slaves in the Arab world was the Zanj Rebellion, which occurred in modern-day Iraq from 869 to 883 AD. The rebellion was led by African slaves, primarily from East Africa, who revolted against the Abbasid Caliphate due to harsh working conditions in the salt marshes of southern Iraq. The rebellion lasted for several years and resulted in significant loss of life on both sides. But how did Arabs treat these slaves? Slaves were primarily used for labor-intensive tasks, including agricultural work, construction, household chores, and mining. They were often subjected to long hours of hard labor under harsh conditions without proper rest or compensation. Many slaves experienced physical abuse at the hands of their owners or overseers. 
This could include beatings, torture, and other forms of violence as a means of punishment or coercion. Female slaves, in particular, were vulnerable to sexual exploitation by their masters or other members of the household. They were often forced into concubinage or subjected to sexual abuse. Some male slaves were castrated to serve as eunuchs, especially in wealthy households or within royal courts. Castration was performed to ensure loyalty and to prevent slaves from reproducing. Slaves typically lived in overcrowded and unsanitary conditions, often in cramped quarters or makeshift shelters. They were provided with minimal food and clothing, and their living conditions were often deplorable. Also, they had virtually no rights and were considered the property of their owners. They had no autonomy over their lives and depended entirely on their masters for their well-being. They occupied the lowest rung of society and were subjected to widespread discrimination and social stigma. These slaves had no opportunities for social mobility and were viewed as inferior to free individuals. How has this impacted today's society in making Arabs racist? Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. The historical institution of slavery in Arab lands contributed to the establishment of rigid social hierarchies based on factors such as race, ethnicity, and social status. This hierarchical structure has persisted over time and influences contemporary societal attitudes. Those with darker skin tones or of African descent may find themselves marginalized or discriminated against due to entrenched perceptions of inferiority that originated from the era of slavery. The legacy of slavery has also shaped beauty standards in Arab societies, where lighter skin tones are often associated with beauty, privilege, and higher social status. This preference for lighter skin, known as colorism, can be traced back to historical notions of superiority linked to lighter-skinned individuals. In contrast, darker skin tones were associated with servitude and lower social standing. Such biases can perpetuate discriminatory attitudes and behaviors towards darker-skinned individuals, including those of African descent. Historical stereotypes and prejudices towards black Africans as inferior or subjugated have endured and can manifest in contemporary Arab societies. These stereotypes have contributed to the dehumanization and marginalization of black communities, fostering negative perceptions and reinforcing racial biases. Such attitudes have manifested in various forms of discrimination, ranging from everyday microaggressions to systemic barriers in areas such as employment, education, and housing. Language and imagery used in Arab societies have also inadvertently perpetuated racial stereotypes and biases inherited from the era of slavery. Derogatory terms or racially charged language are used casually or even normalized in mainstream discourse, contributing to the perpetuation of harmful stereotypes and reinforcing negative attitudes towards black individuals. Similarly, media representations and cultural depictions also reinforce racial hierarchies and biases, further marginalizing black communities. The economic disparities and labor migration patterns in Arab countries have also exacerbated racial tensions and contributed to instances of racism. Migrant workers, particularly those from African countries, often face discrimination and exploitation in Arab societies, reflecting deeper societal attitudes towards race and ethnicity. This exploitation is rooted in historical perceptions of black Africans as suitable for menial labor or servitude, perpetuating discriminatory practices in contemporary contexts. Political and social factors within Arab societies, including conflicts, geopolitical tensions, and xenophobic nationalist movements, have also exacerbated racial divisions and contributed to instances of racism. Scapegoating and demonization of minority groups, including black communities, is utilized to deflect attention from underlying socioeconomic issues or to rally support around nationalist agendas. Such dynamics further entrench racial prejudices and hinder efforts towards social cohesion and inclusivity. But does this racism exist in modern days? In modern-day Arab societies, anti-black racism persists, manifesting in various forms of discrimination and marginalization. From derogatory stereotypes perpetuated in media representations to systemic barriers in housing, employment, and education, black individuals often face pervasive exclusion and othering. 
Case studies from the Arab world shed light on these lived experiences, highlighting the urgent need for societal introspection and reform. Media portrayals play a significant role in shaping societal perceptions and attitudes toward black individuals in Arab societies. Despite efforts to promote diversity and inclusion, mainstream media often perpetuates harmful stereotypes and caricatures of black people, reinforcing existing biases and prejudices. Depictions of black individuals as inferior, primitive, or criminal contribute to the dehumanization and marginalization of black communities, perpetuating a cycle of discrimination and exclusion. Moreover, systemic discrimination in housing, employment, and education further exacerbates the marginalization of black individuals in Arab societies. Housing policies and practices often reinforce segregation and spatial inequalities, limiting access to quality housing and perpetuating residential segregation along racial lines. Discriminatory practices in the labor market, including hiring bias and wage disparities, restrict economic opportunities for black individuals, contributing to higher rates of unemployment and poverty within black communities. In addition to economic marginalization, black individuals in Arab societies often face barriers to accessing quality education and health care. Discriminatory practices within educational institutions, including tracking and streaming based on race, limit academic opportunities for black students and perpetuate educational inequalities. Limited access to health care services and disparities in health care outcomes further compound the challenges faced by black communities exacerbating health inequities and perpetuating cycles of poverty and marginalization. Case studies from across the Arab world provide insight into the diverse experiences of black individuals and communities and highlight the intersecting forms of discrimination they face. From Sudanese refugees living in Egypt to Afro-Iraqi communities in Iraq, black populations confront systemic racism and discrimination in various facets of life. These lived experiences highlight the urgency of addressing anti-black racism and advancing racial justice within Arab societies. Furthermore, grassroots movements and advocacy efforts have emerged to challenge anti-black racism and promote racial justice and equality in Arab societies. Civil society organizations, activists, and community leaders are working to raise awareness about the experiences of black individuals and communities, mobilize support for policy reforms, and foster solidarity across racial and ethnic lines. By amplifying black voices and centering their experiences, these movements challenge dominant narratives and advocate for meaningful change. Are there any actual examples of racism done by Arabs? In the Gulf region, reports abound of African migrants facing exploitation and abuse, with domestic workers particularly vulnerable to exploitation and mistreatment. African migrants, often seeking better economic opportunities, find themselves subjected to exploitative labor practices and abusive working conditions in countries across the Gulf region. Domestic workers, in particular, face heightened risks due to the intimate nature of their work and the lack of legal protections. Many are subjected to long hours, withheld wages, physical and sexual abuse, and confinement within their employers' homes. The vulnerability of African migrants is compounded by restrictive immigration policies and limited access to legal recourse, leaving them at the mercy of unscrupulous employers and exploitative labor practices. Discriminatory practices in housing markets, such as the refusal to rent to black tenants, have been documented in countries like the United Arab Emirates and Lebanon. Despite laws prohibiting discrimination based on race or ethnicity, Black individuals often encounter barriers to accessing housing in countries across the Middle East. Landlords and real estate agents frequently engage in discriminatory practices, such as refusing to rent to black tenants, imposing higher rent prices, or providing substandard housing conditions. These discriminatory practices perpetuate residential segregation and limit opportunities for black individuals and families to access safe and affordable housing. Despite efforts to address housing discrimination through legal reforms and public awareness campaigns, systemic barriers persist, exacerbating inequalities and marginalizing black communities within Arab societies. We have discussed the role that the media played in this, but that did not do justice to the entire role it is playing. So, let's dive deep. As it's a connected world, the role of media in shaping perceptions cannot be overstated. Arab television, film, 
and literature often perpetuate stereotypes that reinforce notions of racial hierarchy and superiority. Black individuals are frequently relegated to roles as servants or villains, while Eurocentric beauty standards dominate the cultural landscape. This narrative construction not only erases the diverse experiences of black communities but also perpetuates harmful myths that underpin systemic racism. Television dramas in particular often depict black characters in roles that perpetuate stereotypes and reinforce racial biases. Black individuals are frequently cast as maids, drivers, or criminals, reinforcing narratives of black inferiority and perpetuating the myth of white superiority. These representations not only reflect existing power dynamics within society, but also contribute to the normalization of racism and discrimination against black communities. Similarly, in the realm of film and literature, black characters are often relegated to supporting roles or portrayed in ways that exoticize and fetishize their identity. Black women, in particular, are subjected to hypersexualization and objectification, reinforcing harmful stereotypes and erasing their agency and humanity. By perpetuating these stereotypes, Arab media not only marginalizes black communities, but also perpetuates harmful myths that underpin systemic racism and discrimination. Moreover, the dominance of Eurocentric beauty standards in Arab media further marginalizes black individuals and reinforces notions of racial hierarchy and superiority. Lighter skin tones, straighter hair textures, and European facial features are often idealized, while darker skin tones and Afrocentric features are stigmatized and deemed less desirable. This bias towards Eurocentric beauty standards not only erases the diverse beauty of black individuals but also perpetuates internalized racism within Arab societies. But what if they try to work toward equality? What challenges will they face? Addressing Arab racism against blacks requires a multifaceted approach encompassing legislative reform, societal education, and grassroots activism. Initiatives such as Tunisia's anti-racism law represent positive steps towards accountability, yet significant challenges remain in translating legal frameworks into meaningful change. Furthermore, fostering dialogue and collaboration between diverse communities is essential in challenging entrenched prejudices and fostering a culture of inclusivity. Legislative reform plays a crucial role in combating Arab racism against blacks by providing a framework for accountability and redress. In recent years, some Arab countries have taken steps to address racism through the introduction of anti-discrimination laws and policies. However, despite these legislative efforts, significant challenges persist in translating legal frameworks into meaningful change. Implementation and enforcement of anti-discrimination laws remain weak in many Arab countries, hampered by a lack of political will, institutional capacity, and public awareness. Discriminatory attitudes and practices continue to permeate various aspects of society, perpetuating inequalities and marginalizing black communities. Moreover, legal reforms alone cannot address the deep-rooted prejudices and structural inequalities that underpin Arab racism against blacks, highlighting the need for comprehensive approaches that address societal attitudes and behaviors. Societal education and awareness raising are essential components of efforts to combat Arab racism against blacks. Promoting understanding and empathy through education can help challenge stereotypes, dismantle prejudices, and foster a culture of inclusivity and respect. Schools, universities, and community organizations play a vital role in educating the public about the history of racism, the impact of discrimination, and the importance of diversity and tolerance. By incorporating anti-racism education into curricula and promoting intercultural dialogue and exchange, societies can empower individuals to confront racism and discrimination in all its forms. Grassroots activism and community mobilization are crucial in challenging entrenched prejudices and promoting racial justice and equality. Civil society organizations, activists, and community leaders play a vital role in advocating for the rights of black individuals and communities, raising awareness about racism's experiences and mobilizing support for policy reforms. Through advocacy campaigns, protests, and community organizing, grassroots movements can pressure governments and institutions to take action against racism and discrimination and promote systemic change. Additionally, 
Fostering dialogue and collaboration between diverse communities is essential in building solidarity and collective action against racism and discrimination. By creating dialogue, exchange, and collaboration spaces, societies can bridge divides, challenge stereotypes, and build more inclusive and equitable communities. In the end, let's talk about the things Black Arab people did that have gone forgotten because of racism. Black Arab scholars have significantly contributed to various fields, including science, philosophy, literature, and theology. However, Many of these contributions have been marginalized or overlooked in mainstream narratives. Figures such as Ibn al-Haytham, a pioneering physicist and polymath, and al-Jahiz, a renowned scholar and philosopher, are examples of black Arab intellectuals whose contributions have enriched human knowledge. Black Arab people have also played a vital role in shaping the cultural landscape of the Arab world through their artistic expression and cultural contributions. From music and dance to literature and visual arts, black Arab artists have left an indelible mark on Arab culture. For example, the rich tradition of Afro-Arabic music, blending African rhythms with Arabic melodies, reflects the cultural fusion and diversity of the region. Black Arab individuals have been at the forefront of political and social movements advocating for equality, justice, and human rights. Despite facing systemic racism and discrimination, Black Arab activists have organized and mobilized communities to challenge oppressive regimes, combat racism, and promote social change. Their contributions to the civil rights and liberation struggle deserve recognition and acknowledgement. Apart from that, Black Arab people have served in various military and leadership roles, contributing to the defense and governance of Arab societies. From generals and commanders to rulers and politicians, Black Arabs have played significant roles in shaping the political and military landscape of the region. Examples include the Mamluks, a medieval slave dynasty of predominantly Turkic and Circassian origin, which included many black slaves who rose to positions of power and influence. Despite facing socioeconomic challenges and systemic barriers, black Arab individuals have demonstrated resilience and entrepreneurship in various fields. From business and commerce to technology and innovation, Black Arab entrepreneurs have made valuable contributions to economic development and innovation in the region. Their achievements serve as a testament to the ingenuity and creativity of Black Arab communities. It is not right to forget all this. And if racism persists, the community will be suppressed. Do you think the Arabs can ever establish equality? What would happen if racism persisted? Do you think there are ways to end it? Let us know in the comment section. Will Arabs accept black people as their community? Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If so, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.